Hey, it's Tim here. Today, a different kind of video. I'm actually uploading a correction, yes. When I made a video about the error calculation in 2021.2, there was essentially a mistake that I made, and it was an assumption. Now, what actually happened in this error calculation is I had a data set from uh, a London uh, data provider, and in that data set, they'd actually pre-calculated the area. And the reason I was looking for this data set is because I needed some way of validating Tableau's error calculation against another data set. So the assumption I made was that the company that produced this data had done it correctly. Now it actually turned out that when I did this comparison in the video, you can see here at seven minutes 55, I'm actually comparing seven side by side the two calculations. And you can see that I'm, I'm calling out that the Tableau error calculation is way off. I actually sent this feature into Tableau and they actually took some time out to look at the data set and to look at the error calculation. And it turned out using another tool that the error calculations in the data source I was using was actually incorrect. And therefore I came to the conclusion that the error calculation was not as accurate as it should be um, over certain types of geographies. And in some cases you can see here side by side, it maps pretty well, but there was just a few object IDs here that were generating uh, areas that just weren't matching. And that wasn't the fault of Tableau, it was actually the fault of the error calcs that were done in this data set. Now, um, it teaches me a really important lesson, which is to never make the assumption that the data source that you find from a trusted source is always correct. And number two, I jumped to a conclusion without first validating it before I released the video. Now, in order to fix this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to upload the video again. I'm not going to re-record the video, but I will put a note up in the section where I'm calling out the mistake or the issue with Tableau's data source to actually val validate that the issue here is not to do with Tableau. Um, I, I sort of don't want to re-record the video and then delete the old one because I think it's good to sort of fess up to your mistakes and actually realize that we're all still learning. And um, at the end of the day, um, Tableau did the due diligence into making sure that, that the calculation was doing the best job it can. Now, if you're into some sort of uh, detail about this, it's actually quite hard to do error calculations on something like the curvature of the Earth. Depending on the size of geography, you can get slight variances depending on how you do the calculation. So I'm not the expert on this. I'm going to maybe link to some articles in this description for this video so you can go off and find out the complexities of doing that. There's actually a Tableau paper on hexagons and um, hex mapping uh, and sort of showing the disproportionate behaviors that you can get and how you have to sort of correct for that over large areas. So I actually recommend you read that. That's a proper in-depth paper by people who know what they're talking about um, that can give you more context into this. But that's pretty much it for me. I just wanted to add this correction in front of the video, but upload the video as is rather than trying to sort of hide the fact that I got it wrong. So there we go. We all make mistakes and hopefully you can learn from mine. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Hey, Tim here. In today's video, I'm taking you to a new feature in 2021.2, and that is the new area function, a new spatial function that allows you to calculate the area of a polygon. But before I get into this, be very careful with this. If you use this over large geographies, it's actually only giving you an estimate. I'll get into why that is in a second. But let's get stuck into this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've actually gone to this website. When you're working with spatial data, it's always good to have a good sample data. And I've gone to this London data store to grab flood risk zones as calculated by the Environment Agency. Essentially, they figure out where there's a flood most likely to happen in London. And they've created a shape file or a bunch of polygons for us to use if we want to visualize that. It's part of an open data initiative. Now, this was created three years ago, so it's nothing new. But I'm going to connect to this directly in Tableau. I've actually gone ahead and downloaded it to my desktop, so it's already there. So I'll just go back into Tableau here and we'll just go ahead and use the spatial file. So if you've never used the spatial file before, it's actually this option here. It's essentially a type of file that has information about geography. That's the simplest way to sort of think of it. And so if I click on this, you'll see that I actually uh, have the ability to open the file and shape files don't just come on their own. They tend to come with other supporting files, but the one file that we're interested in is this one, which ends in .shp. So if we click that and click open, you should see that Tableau handles this absolutely fine. It's been a native capability of Tableau to support these out of the box. So it's just right into this Tableau. And the great thing is that it works with everything, including the data model. So if you want to pair this up with other data that you have and find out where the properties are in certain London flood zones, you could. It's an absolutely very simple thing to do. Maybe that's for, for another video. But nevertheless, we've connected to this data. Now I'm just going to go right into sheet one. And you can see that here on the left hand side, we've got all our fields. Now in Tableau, it's super easy to create a map. You just double click any geographical field and it will do it for you. The way I know it's geographical is because there's this world icon to the left 
So let's just double click that and see what happens. Uh, it's a geometry field and boom, we already have a map. Now, I know this is London, but it has some really poor context on here. There's nothing on the map that suggests this is London. So let's customize this map before we carry on. Let's go to map layers at the top. Let's choose a more interesting map. Let's choose streets. Um, this should start to give us a little bit more sort of a vibrant map. I'll sort of dial down the, the, the wash in the background just so that the visualization is actually what we see prominently. But it's nice because I have a literal label that says London. I have all the London boroughs and towns. So if you're familiar with London, this should start to look very familiar for you. But nevertheless, we're here to look at this new function. So I'm going to close this map layers option. And when I look at this data, if I just open this uh, little data preview, for that, I just went over here. That Clicking that little table icon opens up this data preview that you can see. And you can see that there's a bunch of different shapes and each one has an object ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that object ID. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that I've actually already got the area in here. And the reason I want this in here is because I want to show you how accurate this area calculation actually is. In essence, the bigger the proportion of uh, area, the less accurate this is going to be. And we'll kind of do a quick calculation just to see how much it sort of varies. So let's let's go ahead and look at that. So let's go ahead and let's just close this. And now what I'm going to do is We'll grab object ID and just put it on color so that each and every one of these polygons gets its own sort of color. Now, the reason this isn't quite showing what I wanted to show is because I need to bring in more context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drag the object ID up into this table section. What's happening here is that the object ID is being treated as a number. So it's actually aggregating it. I don't want that. I want it to treat it as like a text field. So what I'll do is I'll cheat on it a little bit. I'll actually drag object ID up here. You'll see that it changes to dimensions when I do that. And now it's blue. And now what I can do is put that on color. And now each and every one of those shapes has its own unique color. And if I hover over that, you can see that it sort of activates and we're now able to click on them and interact with them. So that's working really, really well. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to just look at this table again and just see what's also useful to bring. Probability band, that's probably telling you how much of a flood risk zone this is. So what I'll do is I'll put it on a uh, tooltip because I want this in the tooltip when I hover over something. So you can see that uh, some of these are very low, some of these are very high, uh, and it essentially changes depending on the part of the, the the map that we click on, but it's it's sort of working. Anyway, we've got enough information on our visualizations. Let's go ahead and actually use this function. So it's a super simple function. It's actually one of these, these functions um, in Tableau altogether. So if I just type in area, you see that you get a little hint here of what you should use. So you should use a polygon dimension in here and the units that you want to measure the area in. So in this case, my polygon dimension is this geometry field. So I can actually just drag it in and drop it right there in Tableau, then hit a comma. And I'd like this done in meters. So I'm just going to do two speech marks, single or double, works perfectly fine. Enter an M and then now that's our calculation done for meters. You can also do kilometers and miles. Uh, you just have to find the appropriate documentation for that. In fact, let me bring that on screen now. I've actually, you know, when I do these videos, I literally have the documentation to the left of me. Um, so you can see here the different uh, dimensions you can use. So meters, kilometers, miles, and feet. Those are all the different syntaxes you can use. So um, you could actually probably use a parameter to switch between those. So you can calculate um, all of them and then just put a parameter in here to change meters to feet and then it will dynamically recalculate it rather than using a parameter to change the different calculations. But nevertheless, this is really cool. And um, we've got the area in meters squared. I'll just put MT as a, as a shorthand and we'll hit apply. And now what I want to do is I want to grab the area in meters squared and the shape area and put them both on the tooltip so we can actually see what those two are like. Okay. Now that's working, all the calculation is done. And now when I hover over this, you can actually see the two values. So you can see here area in M2 and, and the shape area. Now there are subtle differences, okay? And we're talking roughly a thousand meters squared here or there, depending on how big the geography is. If I go down here to a slightly smaller one, you'll notice that the, the, the differences become larger, the bigger the geography. But if we go to a really small one, let's go to one of these ones here. They're very, very small differences. So. Essentially, the problem with this uh, function is that um, the shape of the world is not flat. <laughs> if you're a flat earther, this is not the video for you, but essentially the world is a curved platform. And the more curved something is, the harder it is to actually calculate the area because you've got to sort of flatten it out. And by the time you do that, it, it doesn't actually make a perfectly flat shape. 
So what this area calculation doing is it's sort of trying to compensate for that, but it's not really doing it sort of fully. You need a little bit more of a complicated sort of calculation in order to do that. Whereas the area calculation in this spatial file has actually been calculated by uh, the environment agency using fairly accurate um, mechanisms because they have to know the size of these things. Things like insurance policies are based on these uh, ratings. So they have to be pretty accurate as, as to how they work. So you can see there's a big difference. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna build a very, very simple visualization. I'm just going to bring in object ID, uh, add all of them. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in the area in meters squared, and I'm going to bring in the shape area in the table next to it. So you can just sort of see some of these uh, side by side. Now, some of them are very similar. Some of them are very different. Like for example, this one, it's sort of interesting because um, you know, this one's just so way off. So why is Tableau getting that so different? Whereas some of these, they're almost so bang on. So it could be to do with the shape and the form of the of the a particular a geography. It could be a long versus thin versus, you know, you don't know all these sort of variables. So in generally speaking, you can see that this is an estimate, but it's just worth being careful and knowing that this is an estimate because you see there, this particular object, it says it's 12, but the actual area is calculated by the environment agency is 224. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, what you could do is you could actually sort of uh, create a table. So if I was to sort this um, from the largest uh, shape area to the to smallest, you can see that some of these are just way off. So it's definitely one to be sort of wary of um, and to be really careful how you're sort of relying on this function because it can actually throw uh, some of your things off if you rely on it too much. What are the best use cases? Listen, if you're measuring things like playgrounds, parks, this is perfectly fine. You know, nice, simple geographies, polygons, shapes, simple geographies. If you're measuring the area of, let's say, a river that travels over a long distance, well, that's going to be a little bit more tricky because, of course, over a longer distance, there's more curvature. And um, the uh, shape or area calculation is only going to be able to calculate it to sort of one extreme. So you will get less accuracy for polygons that span really large distances and large geographies. But I'm not a scientist here. I'm just sort of going off what, what I see and what I know I've asked the devs about. Uh, but it's definitely one to just watch out for. And some of these, I think, I think there's probably just an issue with the polygons. You can see that that says 20 and then it's just completely way off. So. It's not, it's not sort of an exact science. And I, I need to get more into this to really understand, you know, why are some of these really, really close and why are some of them really, really far off? Uh, the figure on the right is the accurate one from the environment agency. I just wanted to get that there before I show you a calculation. And I tell you that it's correct as fact and then he has a slight margin and actually, some of these have huge margins. So I'd be interested to see what you think of that. If you're a geographer or you actually use spatial functions all the time, I'd love to know um, if you know anything about why this is. Why is this calculation in Tableau getting it um, so different to uh, the values that have been calculated by the Environment Agency? What I will do is I'll put a link to this data set and maybe you can tell me if you've got some insight as to why that is. Um, but I'd love to get to know more, all right? Anyway, that's that's it. We have uh, area functions in Cat Tableau now. You can use these over simple geographies and they're going to be really, really useful. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of the other videos in 2021.2 on this channel, as well as other versions of Tableau from way past all the way to functions in Tableau. I cover everything. So get in touch. Let me know what you'd like to see. And if not, uh, hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.